Hello, welcome to tdcat.com. A while ago I did a tutorial on, uh, well it's more of a walkthrough actually, on the audio processing settings within Sam Broadcaster and I said I would do a follow-up to that. Well this is that follow-up. It's a little bit late, I know, but this is where I'm going to try and get the processor to sound fairly decent. So first of all, before we start, I just want to say I'm going for a kind of charty type station here. I'm going for a rock, um, uh, pop, you know, dance indie, that that type of sound on the station, right? I'm not going uh, for classical, uh, which, would, which you would process very differently. Jazz, you'd probably process very differently, something like that. Uh, I'm going for a chart station and I'm going for a fairly sort of full, well-processed uh, sound. So we will be sort of taking the dynamics out of the music, but it does give it that big, that bigger sound that uh, very, was very, very common in stations. Um, well, it's actually very common in stations now. It's just not always done that well. So can we get sound to sound good? Well, I, I've had a play around and yes, actually, I've got it to sound pretty decent. So I'm going to just talk you through how I did that. Uh, and it's all a matter of taste, admittedly. You might kind of think, well, this sounds rubbish, but well, it's subjective, isn't it, how things sound? First thing, first things first, right, so where is our audio processor? Well, it's in Audio Mixer Pipeline, AGC, and then under the AGC tab here. But the first thing I want to ask you to do is go through each of everything else other than the mixer and turn off the audio processors, because by default, I think these are all enabled which is pretty stupid, processor on the end of a chain in most situations, particularly in a radio station. And uh, you may be processing your mic separately, uh, but it's unlikely that you would process your music differently for different decks. But yeah, anyway, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do global processor for the whole thing. So go through deck A, deck B, uh, sound effects, voice effects, all these, turn them all off by hitting bypass all and job done. So now we go to our mixer here and enable that one so that one shouldn't be set to bypass. Now I've got this set to the default settings at the moment. I'm going to run you through what I would change on these default settings. You can load up the default here. So let's load up the default and we know that uh, we're starting from the same point. I'm using a fairly ver old version of Sam, by the way. Uh, this is version 2014.5 or something. It's the uh, my license uh, is only up to up to that version. I have no reason to change it because it does everything I need it to do. So, yeah. So this is uh, hopefully will be similar or the same in the new versions. Right, so the gated AGC, we discussed this last time. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is say that that's way too much. Um, I would take that down. Um, I don't think you will need to drive, because we're going to do this through the five-band processor, not the dual-band processor. So you, I don't think you'll need with any content to drive this processor with 20 dB of additional gain. So we're going to take that down and we're going to drop that to 10 dB. And the gating at minus 40, well, that's a sort of taste thing, but minus 40 is fairly a fairly good point, and we're just going to leave that there. Stereo expander, I'm just going to turn that off because I don't see any need for it. It just flowers the sound in a way that I don't personally like. So I'm going to leave that off. Base EQ, well, that's pretty common to do on a pro on an audio processor. You would probably have about 6 dB of, uh, of gain around the kind of 60 hertz point, so I'm going to leave that in place. And and yes, it would be a shelving EQ. So 6 dB, do you need that much? Well, yeah, that's probably about right. Right, so t let's turn off the dual band processor and enable the five band processor. And our clipper, in fact, I'm going to disable the clipper as well because we're going to limit control this within uh, SAM. And limit control, if you particularly if you're broadcasting on the web, is nowhere near as important um, as uh, as it would be with a true broadcast processor, where it's a legal requirement to have your limit controlled. So we can control the five band separately, as we went through in the last video. That's great. And uh, one thing I didn't notice on the 
previous video, I don't think I noticed this, so I'm going to just point this out to you now, is that these, this isn't left and right channel. I thought this was left and right channel, but it's not. Uh, the bottom meter is the level of the music itself, and the top meet, uh, the top meter is the, the kind of level that the, that the particular band is at. So if it kind of is held for some reason, because you've got to hold the control here, uh, you can see that hold here. So basically this is kind of the adjustments that are taking place on the band and that's the actual level of the music coming through and that's the same across all the bands. The first thing I'm going to do is go through each of the bands and I'm going to disable the expander because I want a compressor limiter here. I want a multiband compressor limiter. I don't want expansion on this. So I'm going to disable expansion on each of these bands. So I'm going to go up through these, disable all this and I'm going to then say, right, compression, is that enabled on each of them? Yes, it is. Good. Limiter. I am my, I'm happy with minus nine as a threshold for the limiter, but I'm going to change the gain to just be a standard zero dB across the board on the limiter. Um, you can adjust that depending on how, you know, the source of your music and how it's how it fits, but... I'm not going to not going to add any more bass sort of punch to the bottom uh, there. So we're going to keep that static across the board. So that's basically you know one way where we're controlling our level here um, is the uh, you know the limiter on the multiband limiter. So we're not using the dual band processor. And we're not going to clip this because clipping has sort of artifacts with it. It makes it sound a bit rougher. And you might need to do that. But for this, and for the results I got, didn't want to do it. Uh, the way the channel, the crossovers work between the channels, I'm happy with it at 50%. That's fine. I'm not sure exactly what frequencies these are at. I'm sure that's in a manual somewhere, or whoever wrote this software will probably know that. Right, so let's go to the compressor, because that's where most of the work's going to happen. Uh, band 1 is the low frequency, and it goes up to band 5 being the high frequency. And our ratios are set, well, they were set, set about right. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'd say, say 4 four's fine. And our threshold, I'm going to drop on our lower bands a little bit, because, I'm um, sorry, I'm going to increase, should I say, on the lower bands a little bit. I'm going to increase those to about minus 7. I'm going to leave the rest at, a, at about minus... a little bit more than they are at the moment, about minus 10, about minus 10.8. So that's good. Right, and let's go through the bands again and look at the attack times. Well, attack, an attack of 100 milliseconds. Yeah, that's probably, probably, about, probably about right. If you do it too aggressive, it sounds very sort of unnatural. You can drop this right to 10 milliseconds, but I probably wouldn't want to do that. Maybe speed it up just a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry that I can't really do this with any music playing, but the songs I want to do this on are will be copyright protected, and I'm not going to do this with some rubbish, royalty-free stuff. Nothing wrong with royalty-free music. Um, it, it's just I'm not familiar with it from sort of testing a, a an audio processor. I, I just don't know the song. So these, you know, this, I've got a couple of songs here which I will do on a separate video where I'll actually play the music and uh, I'll host that on the website because I can do that, you know, I can do that myself, but I can't do that on YouTube. So this is the YouTube version without music. Uh, okay, right, so the most important thing next is the release time. This is way too quick. 500 milliseconds, you're just going to get it sounding pumpy and horrible. Uh, you can really, really push, push this up. Let's get this up to three and a half seconds on each, on all of these bands. Don't, there's no need for it to be down there at 500 milliseconds. So let's bring this right up. You'll, you'll find, actually, that when you're watching the meters, three seconds is not long at all. And uh, you'll kind of wonder why they were so sort of punchy at 500 milliseconds. So, so I'm going to bring those up. The hold, what that does is when the band has responded, it puts a small hold in place before, it's, before it begins its release time. So you can say, right, it'll, if, a, if a something comes in, it'll go bang, and it'll drop the level down, 
and then it'll hold for 500 milliseconds as I've got it set, and then it'll begin this release time. But no need to use that because a release time of three and a half seconds is sufficient. So we'll just leave that down at sort of 12 milliseconds. And I think that's probably pretty good. Da -da 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 -da. Bank gains, fine. Um, I think that's probably concerned. oh yeah the overdrive yeah that's that's sort of a, a great, again comes down to taste you might want to drive your processor a little bit more get it sounding a bit a bit more bit fuller but I sound I find that this setup sounds fairly fairly aggressive anyway even you know I was comparing two tracks before I was playing Francis and the Lights and and Friends you know the one with Bon Iver. And then I was shifting it into an old 80s song from Toto, I Will Remember, which has got a great beginning. But the two together are very different in their levels and stuff. So, And it, and it works really well. It, you know, you're getting a good overall uh, sort of processing effect on different kind of level tracks, if, even if it's an old 80s CD. And that's the good thing about testing with these kind of Roger Waters, Tide is Turning, Toto. It's because they were non-hyper-compressed CDs when they were released and they give you a nice flat input to be able to hear what your processor is doing otherwise if you push in like francis and the lights you'll find that the levels are just like up here anyway and if anything the process is actually reducing the levels and just making it sound a little bit more radio like if you if, if you like you know with a nice sort of solid bass line and a little bit brighter maybe but yeah that's just how music's gone over the years or how mastering has gone over the years so I'm going to drop this overdrive right down to 0 dB and leave it there and turn it make, make sure the dual process is turned off and I think we're good to go so let's just hit hit this uh, Toto track very quickly uh, if it will, will it, oh no wait, I've got to be actually out of this haven't I yeah see you've got to go I've got to go out of, out of it to see what it's doing um, yeah, that should, should be okay, I think. In fact, let me just push up the level on here because I can't play much of this because of the copyright thing I was talking about before, but I'm going to push up the level on my mixer. This will be quite loud, I would have thought, so let's give this a go. All right, so you can... Okay, that sounds good, and and I will just quickly, if I can, show you the difference between enabled and disabled. I'm gonna have to have it playing, aren't I? Arrgh! Right. There you go. So really, really quick example. Well, so what I'm going to do anyway, I'm going to do another video, I think, which I'm going to put on my website. Or alternatively, I'll leave this video on the website and I'll just put a couple of tracks that I've processed with this, set, with these settings. There we go. I hope you found that useful and if it works for you. Oh, the other thing I'll do on the website, of course, is, uh, and, I'll, and below in the comments, and uh, in sorry, below in the description, I will link to the preset and you can just put the preset in the folder and uh, load that in directly. So this preset here, td one will link to that file and you can just save yourself all the bother if you want. See you soon. Bye.